Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Talking Numbers podcast series. It's our Talking Numbers Investment Plus series. And my name is Paul Jantz. Welcome to our episode six. It's the last episode in our series. So our series one, we've taken you through some fantastic pieces of information, some advice, all general advice. This series is brought to you by Virtual Financial making financial advice affordable to all Australians. And some of the key areas in this educational series has been outstanding. So if you haven't had the opportunity to go back as well, um, please go back, have a look at um, episodes one through to five. This is our last one as we talk about the future and how you can plan for the future. I have Adam Besserovic with me. How are you, Adam? Welcome back to our Talking Numbers Investment Plus podcast series. Thanks, Paul. Great to be here. Yeah, mate, it's been great. And um, again, the the knowledge that you have in this industry is just outstanding. So hopefully to all of our listeners out there, we really hope that you take this away. Um, Adam's spoken about the importance of the planning aspect. So to step away, maybe it's a day away, maybe it's a half a day away with your partner, your husband, your wife, and start start doing the planning, that you, which, which, which is really important. Um Mate, I might throw to you, because I think, you know, as a part of our six-part series, it's episode six, what's a, what's a key message? I know you probably will touch on it again with what I just spoke about, but what's a key message you'd like to, for our listeners to take away to, to kick off episode number six? Thanks, Paul. Look, I, I think it really, it, you know, our strap line is it starts with you. So I, I think, you know, our listeners need to be brave and, and take action. You know, it starts with them. So if they can actually make an effort, you know, become part of that 10%, get advice, um, you know, and, and and take that, you know, as I said in the previous podcast, take one day off a year. That might be tomorrow. And, and, and just spend your time on your financial life. Because what you can do is if you do that one day a year, I can assure you that you're going to have financial certainty and you'll become one of those 10% rather than 90%. And, we're, you know, we're here to help you. And uh, hopefully this series has gone part of the way through for that. Yeah, well said. And I think financial certainty is a, is a really key, you know, two key words there, financial certainty. I think everyone would like that you know, when we're going through a time of increased costs, increased costs of living, interest rate hikes. Um, you know, there's going to be more interest rate hikes. We, we know that that's been tipped. Our cost of living, you know, the... The, you yeah. know, the war with Russia isn't exactly going away, so we're going to have problems with um, petrol. You know, Again, supply and demand forces prices up. So financial certainty is a really, really important term that you just used there. So well said. But let's get into our last episode of our six-part series. Um, look, at, there's, there's a lot of experts out there that talk about the importance of planning. And I know even in my coaching days, I used to talk about the importance of proactive planning. And if you don't plan, you will plan to fail. And that's, that's a common term that's used for a number of years now. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, planning for the future. Um, what do you think that looks like? And what are some of the key words that you would use that? Or let's maybe even the top five things in terms of planning for the future. Yeah, look, um, I, th- I think it's really important um, for, for clients to, um, and listeners to, and to ensure that, you know, they, they have, um, their estate planning under control. You know, we've spoken about super and we've spoken about retirement planning, but estate planning and their wills is very, very important as well. And I think um, to to really have uh, your estate planning uh, under control, making sure you've got your will in place, making sure you've got your enduring power of attorney in place, uh, it, it not only gives you uh, comfort uh, knowing that if something happens, everything's taken care of. I think it's just one other bit to the, I suppose, the jigsaw that, that, that clients really uh, need to look at uh, going forward. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. So estate planning, power of attorney. So just to, just to cover off quickly, what's estate planning? So estate planning basically is, is, is us uh, working. So we work with our clients with uh, uh, either their lawyer or we have lawyers we work with just to ensure that, you know, in the event of uh, death or disability that, you know, um, everything financially is taken care of and, and the, the money goes to where it should go. Uh, and, it, you know, we, we don't want it going through, pro, you know, we don't want it going through the government and uh, taking delays and everything else. If you have a proper will in place, you know, that can really smooth the process out and not cause a whole lot of heartache 
uh, for family members, you know, going through, uh, you know, if, if, there, if there's no will in place. So uh, having that, and we've seen it a number of times with our clients, having the will in place, it, it just makes things run a lot smoother when in a time of need when everything needs to be tidied up. Uh, it, it's, it's very important. Yeah. So, so, so a power of attorney is in the, in the event that you're incapacitated to make a decision, somebody makes that decision for you? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, you know, um, we see it a lot with people that, you know, have dementia and so forth, you know, it's uh, um, the wife or the, or the husband can still act on and, and uh, on behalf of the, you know, pay bills and all that sort of stuff on, on, on behalf of the, uh, of their partner. So it, 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 it's really important and, it, and it's important. You've got to get that put in place before that, before an event happens, you can't, well, you can't do it afterwards, but it's a, a big headache. So again, it's just about planning. I mean, we don't like to talk about death or mm. people having incapacity or, or, or whatever else it might be. Um, but you know, I, like I know I just, just spent, uh, I had a will in place anyway, but I just refreshed the whole lot um, myself. And, you know, obviously, you know, it's really important especially when you've got, you know, I've been previously married and so forth, so different kids and everything else. So you need to make sure that all those bases are, co- are covered because in the time of death, you don't want to have there any any disputes between family members and so forth. No, it's a very, very important point. And, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. Um, and I think in, in sort of one of the previous episodes, I mentioned that I have an 86-year-old mother, just, um, mm. just turned 86 yep. a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah, the not only does she have a will, but she's got some very clear outlines of how she, we had this interesting conversation about death. And it's not something you want to talk about, but it is a really important topic to talk about. And she's yeah. got some very clear guidelines, I'll call it, around what she wants to happen when she passes. And not only, I ended up recording it just thinking, well, I've got it recorded now on file to give to the lawyer as well. So that things like that are really important because they're her wishes. It's not what our wish is. It's her wish. Um, and she was really adamant that that's what she wanted. Yeah, exactly. And that's what she wanted to happen. You know, so yeah, very important. Look, you know, unfortunately, again, not many people, you know, nine out of 10 people don't have a will, you know, so we, we're really driving and pushing our clients to get wills. We try and make it as easy as possible as we can for them. We, we push them and drive them. And part of our review meeting every year is to remind them that they need, need to have that in place. And, 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 you know, we work with some really good lawyers that can really help that situation because you don't want to be in a situation where, you know, you've got previous partners or previous yeah. kids of marriage and, you know, who gets what and, um, you know, I've, I've, unfortunately, over my 30 years, I've seen some really negative things come out of uh, people dying in estates. Um, you know, um, yeah, it's, it, it, can get, it can get very ugly. Yeah, agree, agree. So let's talk about wills because there's, there's, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, and that is um, how important is it to, and I'll call it a proper will. That's the first one I want to talk about. And then in terms of age, uh, you know, there's there's people that are 30 that don't believe they need to have a will. So how you know what's the what's the age that you can start to start preparing for a will and why? So let's go into the importance of a proper will because I know there's things out there. There are different types of wills. There are wills that you can just go and pick up at the the post office. Um, mm. You know, mate, give me your thoughts on you know the different types of wills and let's say a proper will that you should have in place. Well, the, the problem with a post office will or one you do yourself, if it's not executed properly, um, you know, independent witness and sign each page and, you know, there's a number of different things that have to happen for it to be. Um, you know, so um, it's really important for clients to, you know, get professional help. Again, what you don't know is what you don't know. And, um, you know, I, I really encourage my clients to to get a proper will in place, uh, to, to 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 make the effort, and and to make sure that you know their wishes, like you just said with your mother, uh, are followed through. You know, yes. so, yeah. So so no, so, so so try and try and avoid the post office will as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, it's better than nothing. Um, you know, uh, so it, it's definitely a step up from nothing. Uh, but I, I still think you know you're better off you know making the effort getting a will done properly, getting the right advice and, and making sure all bases are covered. And especially, you know, it's probably, you know, it's probably not so important if you're, you know, 23 and you own no assets and you, you've got no partner, you've got no kids, you know, that's probably not 
not not really that important, but you know, but once you get married, once you have kids, once you've had more than one partner, all those sort of things, then everything gets a bit tricky, you know. So you, you just need to, you know, me and my wife now, Anne, we've 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 both been married before and we've both got kids different partners so you know it's very important you know she wanted what she wanted for her kids and what i wanted for my kids so we both got extensive wills done just to make sure that everything's clear as day so if one of us passes away um there's no there's no misunderstanding so for example we both put in our wills that you know um um that you know either part either partner is to get the you know keeps the house you know so that there's no claim on the house so we both have the house but then there's other areas where the the kids you know might get other you know investment properties and super and so forth you know so there's a lot of moving bits to 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 our wills and um but we've made it very clear and it's all in writing because you know between us um we actually have seven kids um so we're bigger than the roadie bunch (laughs) So, so, so we've got to make sure that, you know, and if like both of us died, if we both died, you know, we go on an airplane and died or whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's clear what's to happen with our estates. So, you know, there wouldn't be any, any misunderstanding. Um, one child saying, oh no, no, dad said I could have the uh, BMW. No, it doesn't work like that. It's all, it's all clearly shown who gets what. Okay. And in terms of a, let's, let's, let's call it, um, the ability from a from a an age point of view you mentioned an, an important point before which is assets so if, if you even if let's say you're 25 and you own an asset would you suggest someone has a will it's a good question uh and it, it probably just depends on probably just depends on what assets if they've got no assets and and they've got no partner um you know it's probably not that important i mean yes look at that day it's always good to have a will in place uh, and look, I'm, I'm not giving legal advice, obviously, um, but I don't think it's as, as important as if when once you've got a partner, once you've got kids, once you've got a second partner, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, once you get the assets and the uh, the marriage and the kids, and you know, that's when it becomes really, really important. Okay, okay, good. Um, so there was a term that I know that I was asked about. That's why I'm going to ask you on this, because I think it's going to help all, all of our listeners as well in terms of a, let's call it a, a, a testamentary trust. Um, what does that mean in terms of a will? Yeah. So, so a testamentary trust is, 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 is uh, put in place once it's in the will, but it's, it's, it's activated upon death. Uh, and basically what that does is, is we've had a no, number of clients, for example, uh, that use a testamentary trust. They might have a, for example, a child that might be uh, maybe kind of uh, a bit of a lost soul, and maybe he's gone through a number of relationships. Might be on this. Might be on the second or third wife. Might be, you know, might have a, a drug addiction, whatever it might be. So, how they can use a testamentary trust is if you're going to leave that 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 uh, the son or the daughter maybe a million dollars or whatever it might be. Let's just use a million dollars for round numbers. Uh, basically, what you can say is, uh, you might say that, look, um, upon my death, uh, my son can get uh, $100,000 a year for 10 years. So what that does is protects the other assets. So if, if he does have a girlfriend at the time or a, a wife at the time and they break up one year later, well, then he's only lost 100000 because the other 900000 is stuck in the testamentary trust, which they can't get access to. Right. But, so so it helps that sort of person or a person that, you know, might be maybe a drug user or whatever else it might be. You, you don't want to give them a million dollars off the bat. You no. might give them 50 grand a year to, to survive on or whatever it might be uh, and pay it over their lifetime. You know, so that's where a testamentary trust can be used uh, for, um, you know, for planning purposes and, and so forth. So just, just yeah. to, and obviously with testamentary trust, you know, obviously we, we refer them to the lawyers that give them the expert advice in regards to whether they should have one or not have one or, or how that would work. Uh, we, you know, obviously we just give them general advice in regards to uh, the estate planning, but they obviously all of our clients get professional advice and it's all signed off by a lawyer. It's all done through a legal firm to make, yeah, it, brilliant. Easy, to make it easy for our clients. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Mate, and, and, and I know you've, all, you, you, you've always been in this six-part series, you've always shared stories, you know, good and bad. Um, you know, I've also heard horror stories for those that pass away without a will. 
Um, then it turns into a nightmare. Um, you know, the estate, the assets yeah. of the estate just... Is is there, again, a quick story you can share with regards to what can happen if you don't have a proper will in place? Yeah, look, it, it makes it very, very ugly. So it's then, it's then got to go through the, through the government uh, area and then you've there's lots of paperwork and it can drag on it can drag on for years to, you know, fight, try and find out exactly who should get those funds and, you know, people can contest the, can contest the money, uh, people that maybe shouldn't get the money, um, you know, ex-wives and other kids, other partners. So it it, it it just delays everything and 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 can really turn on. I've seen it happen. You know, where families turn on each other because they all believe. Oh no, he said I. He said I could have the house. He yeah. said I, I should have the car. Yes. And they obviously argue and no no. Dad told me I could have. You know, I can live here at the house the rest of my life because I might be living in the house. Uh, but then the other. Three kids say, "No, no, we want to sell the house because it's worth a million dollars. We want, we want our two fifty. Yes, uh, you know. So, yeah. Look, I've definitely seen it, um, and I've seen the other side too, where a person has got a will in place and it goes really smoothly. You know, yeah. so lawyers are very good. If it's done well, um, the lawyers, you know, within about three months, everything can be just tidied up. If it's not, and, it's and, not yeah. And to be fair, it's a one-off cost. Um, not unless you want to get it updated. That's when there could be an additional minor cost. But you know what." What's what's the average charge you think, considering you just got yours uh, done? I've I've found that the wills that we get done are anywhere between eight hundred dollars to three thousand dollars. You know, so you know I can't give it. It just depends on you know. Obviously, if you put trust in place, that increases the yes. cost. You get during power of attorney, it increases the cost. You know, so yep. we we find it somewhere around the eight hundred to three thousand. You know, if someone's worried about costs, they've only got eight hundred dollars. Well, at least get something in place. You know, yes. Uh, so at least get something in place. It's better than nothing. You can always go down the more complex will later in life when you've got some more money. But uh, uh, no, it, it, you know, it's not. It's it's, yeah, it's 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 a necessary cost, I suppose. I suppose it's like pay, as you said before, like paying your car insurance. You know, like you've got to pay your car insurance, and that's that's probably yeah. eight hundred dollars a year or whatever, two hundred dollars a year. Yep. Yep. So you got to think of it. You know, you got to pay car insurance, but you got to pay, you know, state planning insurance. You know, like it's just the way it is. I mean, no one likes yep. to do it. No one likes costs. Um, but as you said, it's a one-off, you know. So, yes. you know, um, you know that's certainly certainly something. And then it's a, and then it's a, as you said in earlier, it's it's a peace of mind. So you know your financial affairs are protected, yeah. and the future of your financial affairs are protected, and maybe your partner, yeah. your children, whatever it may be, are also protected. Um, it, otherwise, it, it piece, just goes into the mind. abyss. Yeah, yeah. Like, like even with myself, you know, like having all mine done because obviously, as I said, mine's very complex. Owning a business, you know, having three kids being married before having my current wife and four children, you know, owning a house, um, my wife having three investment properties. So there's lots of moving parts that parts, we need, yeah. that we need yeah. to make sure that if either one of us die or both, both die. Um, so I'm quite comfortable now knowing that, Hey, if something did happen to me tomorrow, I mean, touch what it doesn't, uh, everything from, from the will point of view is taken care of. Kids aren't going to be arguing or saying, Oh no, but you know, uh, you know, so it's very important to have all that. So, and let's face it, you know, like, you know, as we know, you know, 50% of people end up in divorce. So, you know, like this, yes. you're going to have second partners and you're going to have extra kids and all this sort of stuff, you know, from different marriages. And so it's just so important to have that right in the case of, you know, uh, something happening. Yep. I agree, mate. Uh, look, just... Look, I tell you what, it's it's been a fantastic series. This talking numbers investment plus series, where you've been able to share so much information for everybody. So to all of our lawyers, loyal listeners of Talking Numbers and this series of Talking Numbers Investment Plus, we hope you've enjoyed it. Um, everything that Adam has provided you with has been outstanding. Go back, re-listen to it. Go back, listen to it. Take some notes. Um, I think that's just fantastic, and I want to thank you, Adam, for providing us with your time. Um, look, in wrapping up this six-part series, if there's one piece of advice and you're probably going to you have shared it in the past, what could it be? Uh, be brave. Uh, it starts with you. Okay. Be brave. It starts with you. And make sure you're in the, the, you know, you're not in the majority of the percentage of do nothing. And I think it's about 90% of people do nothing, being the 10% of people that do something. So we certainly thank you for staying with us as a part of this first series uh our six-part series and 
We hope that you've enjoyed every part of it and the information that Adam has provided you with. Uh, look, we are in the planning stages of our next series as well. So stay tuned for series two of Talking Numbers Investment Plus. We hope you've enjoyed the educational content that we've brought to you in this series. My name is Paul Jantz. Thank you, Adam Besarevic. Thank you, Virtual Financial, for being a part of it. And until we talk to you next, see you then. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, mate.